Hi everyone, this is Killshot from 99 Gaming. This is the Walking Dead Comics issue number 11, read and explained, or Comics with Killshot. So I'd like to thank all you guys for tuning in. This has been a great success. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I want to give you guys a couple days to get caught up with the previous episodes. And if you didn't, issue number 10 basically was Herschel and Rick having a conversation. We found out there are people locked up in the barn. In the TV show, we know Shane went out there and just started gunning them down. Shane's dead, so something is going to happen. I don't know about Rick, Lori, and Carl sleeping in the barn. This is kind of an odd cover. But we'll see what happens with that. So here we go. Let's move right along. This is, as we stated, number 11. This is August 2004. So we've got almost a year under our belt. And here we go. Rick, dead ones? What do you mean dead ones? You know, dead ones. People walking around after they shouldn't be, causing all the trouble. I think we kind of get what that is. And you're keeping those things locked up in your barn? Right next to where you sleep? Yeah, we're keeping them in the barn until we can figure out a way to help them. What do you think we've been doing with them? You said yourself, they shouldn't be dead. Shooting them in the head fixes that. We've been killing them. So a little bit of difference of philosophy here. Herschel wants to help them. Rick wants to kill them. Killing them? You've been killing them? So <laughs> this is going to be a standoff, I can see. We're putting them out of their misery and keeping them from killing us. Those things aren't human. They're monsters. They're trying to eat us, for God's sakes. You don't even know why. You don't even know what's wrong with them. Nobody does. Herschel, that veterinarian's got that doctor coming out. Rick states, I know those things are trying to kill us, and the less of them, the safer we will be. All right, and you got them close to your house. Um, looks like Glenn and Maggie just going off to the side here. We should go in the barn and shoot every one of them right in the head so we're safe. So Rick is a little bit overstepping his grounds, in my opinion. So uh, Herschel, my son is in there. Your son? Sean was bitten. It was before we put the barrier around the house. I couldn't help him. Daisy turned. I don't know what else to do. So I kept Sean in the barn. He tried to attack us to kill us, but I couldn't kill him. And then Rick, finger to the head here. Herschel, I'm really sorry. I truly am. I can't imagine what you've been going through. If I had lost Carl. So now cooler heads prevail. Rick understands why he's keeping them locked up in the barn. All right. I don't think I could live without my son, but you got to listen to me, Herschel. That thing in the barn is not your son. And then Otis rolls, oh, get your hand off of me, thap. Otis just got thapped. Hashtag thap. Not my son. What made you such an expert? I don't know about you, but the zombies around here don't come with an instruction manual. We don't know a thing about them. <laughs> Herschel is fired up. For all we know, those things could wake up tomorrow, heal completely, and be completely normal. We just don't know. We could have been murdering all those people that you put out of their misery. Wow, we got a really, really battle of uh, philosophy here. They're dead. Before they get back up, before they try to eat you, they die. You said you saw your son die. Those things are rotting corpses with pieces missing. They're not sick. They're dead. Rick, listen. These things could be in the early stages of recovery. I don't know. They, they don't look like they're recovering. Herschel is just, he's in denial right now because it's his son. All right. No, they're dead. I've seen these things with their guts hanging out. What you're saying doesn't make any sense. Tyrese steps in. Rick, we're guest here. Just stop this. You're right, Tyrese. How many do you have in there? Just by the way. All right, we're going to stop it, but I do want to know uh, what I'm dealing with here. 14. We had to raid the nearby houses for supplies. And so basically they just rounded them all up and put them in the barn. So they're completely safe. They're locked up. If you say so, I'm trusting you on this one. I hope you're right. So Rick, once again... You know, the last time Rick agreed with someone like this was Shane when he didn't move the camp. So we could live to regret this, right? Because something is going to go down in the barn. You just know it. It's what the whole episode is about. Alan, you doing okay? So Alan is roaming around in the uh, cold and the dark. I don't know, Rick. It's been a while since I had a frame reference for okay. How long you plan on staying out here? It's pretty cold. So I'm going to guess here. That because we had all the snow, maybe we're starting to get between winter and spring in the time frame, but it's still cold outside. I just can't sleep in there, you know. I sit and think about how we both used to sleep. So he's having a little bit of memories of his wife. Last night, I swear, I heard Donna talking to me. I was lying there just trying to sleep, and she just kept saying, take care of my boys. It was as clear as day. I think I'm losing my mind. Maybe maybe it was Andrea, like, you know, saying it to make her think it was uh, he, he was losing his mind. You'll get through this, man. Don't worry. 
Yeah, he's already worried. Come on, Rick. I guess still got to be the voice of reason. I don't know, man. Sometimes I think about how much I want to die, and it scares me. I love my boys, I know, but sometimes I just think it'd be easier. Got to pull it together, Alan. Got every right to be sad. Make no mistake about it, but you got to be there. Your sons, they need you. You don't. Oh, hey. Hey, guys. I couldn't sleep. I'm coming out to get some air. So, careful, Glenn. It's pretty dark out. Don't worry, Rick. Rick. I won't wander off too far. I know. Oh, he's wandering off with Maggie. So, we're going to have the Glenn Maggie moment again. And then in the background, we hear, I know, Alan. Nothing's easy anymore. Nothing. So, we get to morning, and I wonder if we're going to shine some more light on the uh, Glenn Maggie situation. Morning, Herschel. Oh, hey, good morning yourself. Did your crew get some sleep last night? Yeah, they had a little extra room in the RV since Lori and I stayed with Carl on your house last night. They got as much sleep as ever. I mean, we don't get much sleep anymore of us. See, everybody's kind of on edge. So I can't imagine how you people made it out of that camp of yours. I feel insecure enough sleeping in the house. Listen, man, I wanted to apologize for last night. Really didn't mean to jump in, in your business like that. I've been a little on edge since Carl got shot. I understand we're all on edge. It's natural. Still, just want to let you know that I really do appreciate everything you've done for Carl and allowing us to stay. Hey, don't mention it. I was just doing what I can to help my fellow man. Anyway, I want to give you and your family some guns. We raided a gun store in Atlanta. We've got some extra that we can give you. Well, thanks, Rick. I hope we don't uh, have to use them quite often. I'm sure they'll come in handy if we do need them. I'm going to be doing a little bit of target shooting with some of the people, the kids, mostly, and you're welcome to tag along should I expect you there. So... Rick and Shane did a little bit of training before. Now Rick is just taking on that responsibility. He's going to get everybody um, up to speed so something like what happened with Otis doesn't happen again. Lacey Arnold and I guess Maggie would be up for it. I really don't want the others involved. Their carrying guns are too young. Seems like Carl's okay. I understand. I'll round up everyone this afternoon. Herschel says, you may want to ask Patricia, Otis's girl, so that way she doesn't have to rely on Otis. Right. Yeah. Rick is not a big fan of Otis. We know that. All right, back to Alan and Andrea. Hey, Alan, can't you take a hint? I have nothing to say to you. You want to run your mouth and give people advice that obviously you don't know anything about? Go do it somewhere else. Now you just hold on up. Look at Dale getting all up in the face, and Andrea's just like, chill out. I'm sorry, Alan, didn't mean to piss you off. It's okay, Dale. You could have fooled me. So Alan and Andrea still uh, nowhere close to reconciling their differences. So I'm sure there's more to come with that. Yeah, let's see. Sophia's in there talking with Carl again. I swear, a few more years, we're going to have to keep an eye on them. Hey, where'd you get that? Oh, the book? Herschel's oldest daughter, Lacey, has quite the collection. I didn't realize how much I miss reading. Speak for yourself. I'd kill for a Vikings game. And I've been thinking about that nonstop for weeks. So Rick and uh, Tyree's talking a little football. Uh, yeah, I'd love to know how the Raiders are doing. If any team can survive this, it's the Raiders. Hey, listen, Chris and Julie are going to be shooting with us later on, right? Are they going to be carrying guns at all time? I don't know, man. I want them to be safe and feel safe, but I don't think they're ready for all that. Maybe a few practice sessions. They're teenagers. I don't know what's going through their heads. Reading you loud and clear. See what we've got to look forward to, Carol? <laughs> Not me. I've talked it over with Sophia. She's skipping right over into her early 20s. Yep, they're not even going to deal with being teenagers. All right, so we are on the shooting range. A little bit of practice going on. Uh, Glenn, obviously, helping Maggie with her aim. Let's see. You about ready? I'm giving you guys some low-caliber guns, make it a little bit easier. Let's do it. This will be fun. Pacow! Yeah, the teenagers over there having a blast shooting the weapons. This is not a game, Julie. This is serious stuff. You listen to Rick and do everything he says. She knows, man. You don't have to worry. We're taking this seriously. Good to know. Thanks, Chris. Patang! Nice one. Thanks, but my teacher deserves all the credit. So Tyrese, pretty good shot there. And here comes her. Whoa, whoa, stop shooting right now. What's the problem, Herschel? The Thompson's house is just over the other side of that tree. Your bullet's probably ripping right through their house. You can't keep firing in that direction. Geez, sorry about that. I had no idea. The Thompsons, huh? They uh, Are they in your barn? That's not the point. I don't want their house to be destroyed. You just can't. That's not what I meant. What? What? What's going on? Oh, and we got one of them walking. Oh, snap. I think I can get it from here. No! I can't let you shoot him. There's only one. He'll be easy to get into the barn. Jesus. Be careful, man. I don't need to tell you how dangerous a bite from one of these suckers is. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good sound effect. 
That's my zombie sound effect. You guys want to hack? Mom. I've done this a few times before. You know, they're really only dangerous when there's more than one. All right, Herschel in action. Let's see. Go over there and get his attention. Over here, ugly. Got you. Look like you got your own system there. Piece of cake. Lacey Arnold, I'm going to need your help getting him in the barn. Gub. All right, so we are walking toward the barn and go around back, distract the others while I throw this one in the barn. So their system is, I guess they go around, beat on the back of the barn, and then Herschel opens up the door and we get them quarantined into a nice little section here. So Herschel opens the door and we got thwack. Oh, snap, Herschel. Uh, dad, dad. So now it is about to go down. Herschel is in trouble. I'm coming, Dad. So, oh, man, his son jumps down. Lacey, the look. Oh, look at that. Lacey has the, is that Lacey or Maggie? I think that's Lacey, judging by the haircut. So I think she's a little bit uh, shocked at what's going on, and it's wrong. Oh, God. Oh, no, no. Wump. Lori, make sure all the kids are in the house. Stay inside. Chris, Julie, into the house with Lori. No, not my father. Not my father. Hungar and oh no and now is this son biting son Arnold Lacey snaps into action here oh man we got to see what is going on this is this is crazy Sean no please son your brother don't do this so Sean is attacking Arnold you got to remember daddy so Maggie is coming over to try to help Maggie stop blam Rick is shooting so Glenn's trying to stop Maggie all right Lacey and Arnold are jumping into action, trying to save Herschel. Sean attacks Arnold, so brother is, is eating the face of his other brother. Maggie and Lacey trying to jump in. We got gunfire. Let me go. Whop. So Glenn knocks Maggie down. Now Lacey is being attacked. We've got gunfire going on everywhere. And, oh, and now, so we're getting attacked again. Daddy, no. Oh, wow. All right, I got I to gotta get these shirts recognized and tell the difference between Maggie and Lacey. Yeah, Maggie, I guess, has the stripes. So, Ark, your gun, Daddy. Maggie helping Herschel out. Da Herschel, I'm sorry, Sean, has to shoot one of his sons. Blam! I'm sorry, Arnold kills the other son. Wow, this is this just escalated in a, in a hurry. And I'm sorry, blam, and then puts the gun to his head. Um, Herschel is about to execute himself. Rick, step. Herschel, no. Maggie with tears in her eyes. So Herschel puts the gun down. All right. And apologizes. So, wow, this scene here, we can just zoom in. You can see a little bit of the carnage. We've got Glenn and Maggie up toward the top. Tyrese is there. Rick and Herschel. And you can see. Lacey, Sean, and Arnold, a big pile of bodies right there, and nothing that Herschel can do. And here we go once again. So we see the scene of the farm, the shadows, the sun is setting, and then here we are with another funeral. Three more tombstones. And Herschel, with tears in his eyes, just says, you were right. And I guess Rick, it sinks in here. Rick doesn't want to be right, but... He's, he's got to do more to stop things before they happen. He, he knows the right path, and then he changes his mind to sort of sympathize with people, and it ends up backfiring in the end. Wow, tough scene there. Tough scene, everybody. All right, here we have uh, Chris and Julie coming back. Dad, Mr. Grimes uh, never took the guns back from us after target practice. I don't want you to get mad. Rick's had a lot on his mind. You know what? Hold on to them. You'll be safer with them. I just don't want to see them out unless it's an emergency. Okay. And then we get the kids here. Finally, I thought that bastard would never let us have guns. It's going to be so much easier now. Yes, we'll do it as soon as the time is right. I love you, Chris. I love you, too. And ends with a kiss. Very, very interesting cliffhanger here. So I have no, I no idea what's going to go down in issue number 12, but there's a couple possibilities. Uh, don't spoil it. We'll figure it out together. Could Chris and Julie be planning a Romeo and Juliet type of execution? They said it's going to be so much easier now. Could they be planning on leaving? Could they be planning on uh, just taking over the group? Are they losing their mind? Um, guess we'll figure this all out together. Thanks, everyone, for watching. This is The Walking Dead Comics, issue number 11, Comics with Killshot. 
And once again, another epic cliffhanger. It's a great thing about the comics. Like almost every episode, you just want to know what happens next. Give this video a thumbs up and talk to you soon. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.